Mohamed Al Qasim joins me in studio. Mohamed, a complex landscape in in uh, Libya, of course, making the crisis so difficult uh, to solve. We understand that when Gaddafi was t uh, toppled, of course, this enormous vacuum was formed, and an extraordinary n number of parties then moved in to fill that gap. So, talk us through how the landscape remains today. Indeed, Tracy, one probably of the most complex uh, civil wars around the world right now. Gaddafi, after 42 years, is gone, but. He didn't leave in peace. He left behind uh, weapons. He left behind a divided uh, country, a uh, tribal country, and also outside elements came in. NATO participated from the get-go, but also other Arab countries, such as Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, as well as Egypt, have filled in. And then, let's not forget, the so-called Islamic State organization played a major role at some point inside Libya, where there is chaos. There is these extremist and terrorist mm. groups. All these uh, elements contributed to the ongoing, continuing civil war in Libya. Each party has its own agenda, its own ideology that they want to push forward from either a secular one to a, uh, an Islamist uh, moderate and extreme uh, form of, uh, of Islam. All these give, you know, with, 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 with power involved as well as outside uh, agendas have contributed to the uh, status quo right now. Now, of course, it depends who you ask, uh, but how would you say it feels or it looks or seems to be when you're living in Libya today, eight years since the uprising? Listen, we could sit here and kind of speculate how Libyans are feeling, but after 42 years of uh, dictatorship, uh, living under with uh, no uh, democracy, no freedom of expression and so forth, that means it's a great, uh, it's a great life now. Let's listen to the Libyans themselves who are celebrating uh, the ousting of uh, Colonel Gaddafi after eight years, and let's uh, have a listen to what they have to say on, uh, on the current situation in Libya. The people want only one thing. They want freedom of expression. Before, there was only repression. This is the only thing we have, freedom of expression, where everyone has the power to say whatever they want. But everything else that my son and many others lost their lives fighting for has not been achieved. After eight years, Libya just keeps getting worse. The economic situation, the increasing bloodshed and taking up of arms. We really can't see any tangible change. Conflicts arise for the simplest reasons. We fought in the beginning against Gaddafi, against the domination of tribalism. Now tribalism is even more dominant than before. We hope on the eighth anniversary for Libya to stabilize and for it to get back to security through national reconciliation, elections and constitution. We need a constitution, stability, a civil and democratic state. This is what we hope for in the eighth anniversary of the February revolution. So Libya isn't, of course, talked about uh, to the same extent as many of its neighbors. Neighbors, but why should the West be focusing on Libya? Not only the West, the international community should pay attention to Libya. Libya has been the launching pad of many terrorist groups inside uh, in Africa. We've seen that uh, ISIS at some point attempted to uh, make Libya its uh, new uh, homeland. Uh, it didn't last very long, but as long as chaos continues, we will see uh, other attempts by ISIS or other uh, extremist groups to take advantage of the chaos. But also, Libya has uh, uh, been a, a, a launching pad for immigrants leaving the African uh, continent crossing into uh, Europe. Many, many uh, migrants have uh, lost their lives in the Mediterranean. So uh, many elements, uh, you know, force the international community to take, to at least mm. do uh, do something to stabilize the situation there. Keep in mind, Libya, as we speak, has two governments. Libya, as we speak, has more than two or three uh, right. different main armies. And there are uh, armies. For elections. So how does that work then, Mohammed? They were supposed to have parliamentary elections at the end of uh, 2018. France worked hard at it. That did not uh, develop. Uh, we have a strong man in Khalifa Haftar who is leading the uh, Libyan National Army, but he is not strong enough to be able to uh, impose his will on the rest of the uh, factions, armed factions in Libya. But again, uh, not having consensus among Libyans to what kind of uh, government they want to have, who's going to lead, what kind of constitution they need to mm -hmm. have, I believe that this will continue for a, for a lot longer. Very briefly, Mohammed, what then could be the future of Libya? Is there a model that we've seen elsewhere in the world that would, could allow us to predict how this could turn out? No. 
No, not really. I mean, we, we, have, we have the Arab countries who have been involved, but they in themselves aren't really unified of, on, on Libya. Egypt wants Khalifa Haftar and one part of one faction to succeed, where, by, uh, where others like Qatar wants the Islamists to succeed. And that's why we don't have uh, something that we could say that we could follow or, or, a, or a blueprint where Libyans could follow on. Uh, at this point, uh, Li Libya needs to uh, stop the bleeding, mm. uh, stop the fighting, and make sure that it does not continue uh, for another an another year. The UN has been working hard, but without the global powers, here I mean the Europeans and the Americans, I don't think uh, Libya can be uh, stabilized. Mm.